Hello guys, welcome back. I hope you're all doing very well. Today, I just wanted to talk all about like health, wellness, fitness, food, just like everything sort of in that realm. I've been thinking about it a lot recently and I would like to say that I feel like I have a fairly healthy relationship with all of these things. It definitely has taken a lot of time and I would say since I started college, I've kind of been like figuring out what works for me and I feel like I'm finally at a place where I can share not necessarily like tips or suggestions, but just like here's what I do and potentially some of this could be beneficial for y'all. I don't know, we'll see. First, I do think it's important to acknowledge that the shift from like living at home to moving out, whether that be just moving out on your own or going to college can and does play a big role in I think people's relationship with food and exercise and cooking and things like that. Just because it is such a shift and if you're used to having like family meals then all of a sudden you're on your own for every meal and trying to navigate either the dining hall or grocery shopping and cooking for yourself or when you're going to go to the campus gym or if you need to get a gym membership like all these things can be kind of difficult and so i think it's totally normal to kind of struggle with that the first couple years just because there's a lot for you to manage i also think for women specifically at least i found like during the time of kind of like starting college i definitely gained a bit of weight i think some of it was like my habits but then also i think some of that is natural just because you're not a teenager anymore and like you're not going to be the same weight fit in the same clothes that you did at that point in time necessarily so i just think that's normal and like again just be kind to yourself starting off with eating these are just things that i do that i found works i'm someone that has three meals a day i could never skip breakfast that's just not something that would work for me and i snack occasionally throughout the day because of my fitness goals which i'll talk about later i try to eat relatively high protein i am vegetarian so that can be difficult at some points but especially after workouts i try to have relatively high protein snack or meal within 30 minutes to an hour it doesn't it's usually longer than that but shortly after working out especially when i'm weight training having protein super important like i said i'm vegetarian i have been for about a year and a half it was a much easier transition than i expected i'm going to be honest and i think you'd be much more intentional about the ways you incorporate protein into your meals but i don't think it's impossible or even super difficult it is a little bit more difficult when you get into trying to continue to like eat mostly whole foods for example i could be drinking those like fair life protein shakes that are one thing that's like 33 grams of protein but it's definitely a lot more processed and also i don't fuck with fair life but anyway like protein bars and things like that are great vegan or vegetarian protein sources but like i personally try to eat things that are slightly less processed that's just me because i tend to feel better when i do that but i don't know I also do not count calories or track my macros or anything like that. I will occasionally look at how much protein I'm eating either like a day or sometimes I'll go for the week and just, just to kind of see if I'm on track of like what I am hoping to be hitting in terms of protein for muscle growth and muscle building. I think getting into those numbers, it's just kind of a slippery slope and like I don't think it's necessary or healthy to be like obsessing over everything I'm eating and tracking all of that. I just think that's leads into a disordered eating a bit. So I don't mess with that. I would also say, sort of related to that, I always encourage people, if they can or are interested in, to not necessarily become vegetarian, but eat more vegetarian meals or more vegan meals, plant-based meals, things like that. But I also think, and I've heard instances of people that become vegetarian or vegan as a means of restricting themselves and what they're able to eat in an unhealthy manner. So I think if you have struggled or are struggling with disordered eating, just be cautious about transitioning to some sort of diet like that. That's just my personal opinion, but I think there are ways you can be vegetarian and even vegan and still be very unhealthy in your eating habits and even what you're eating. So just food for thought. I do not believe in restricting what I eat or not allowing myself to eat certain foods that I want. Like if I have cravings, specifically pastries and dark chocolate are like my favorite things on the planet. Like those are things that I look forward to throughout the week to like enjoy almond croissants, blueberry muffins, dark chocolate bars, like so delicious and i would never cut those out of my life for the sake of health or anything you know my belief that when you start restricting things then it's almost like you just want them more and you start eating other things to try and like fulfill that craving and that's just kind of counterproductive i don't know if y'all get this but like if i'm dehydrated or if i don't have protein i start to get like headaches i feel like it just reinforces the fact that i have healthy habits in place and it's working for me and when i deviate from those too much i start to feel like shit so that's part of my like motivation for continuing to do what I do, you know, because I am the most annoying, sick person, uncomfortable person. Like I hate when I feel slightly off, it's game over. It's, it's horrible for everybody involved. So I do everything in my power to prevent that from happening. All right, let's talk working out. So I've been working out fairly consistently for almost two years, I would say at this point. 
fairly consistently meaning like i don't know anywhere from three to five times a week and doing some cardio but mostly like weight training really quickly and i probably should have started the video by saying this but huge shout out to my parents for instilling really healthy habits both related to food and working out and my brother and i from a young age i think that a lot of people's perception of like health and wellness and fitness and body image comes from their parents and the way that they see them taking care of themselves or speaking about their bodies or things like that and so i just had two really great role models that encouraged us to play sports and eat healthy and balance meals and all these things and i think that that just like set me up for success and so i've been growing up going to the gym and i think that definitely has benefited me starting up going to the gym fairly consistently again when i was like 18 or 19 i was fairly familiar with all the equipment and things like it was a much more comfortable environment because i grew up going there so i do want to acknowledge that like if you are new to the gym and that whole environment it can be a lot more intimidating i just want to acknowledge that i do think childhood and how you're raised plays a really big role in these things i think for a lot of people when they start working out it's usually they have some sort of goal specifically I think a lot of times it's a goal of looking a certain way. Again, I think there's a healthy medium. I think there's ways that it can be super unhealthy, like an unattainable goal and pushing yourself to reach these like unattainable standards. And then also it can be a source of like motivation. So I definitely started out feeling like I wanted to get stronger and not necessarily like lose weight, but just like look more fit kind of. And over the past couple of years, I've shifted that mentality or like my goals to being that I want to bulk up a bit and I want to feel healthy and strong. And so it's like kind of a subtle shift, but I'm less worried about getting smaller. It's sometimes like difficult to explain it to people because I feel like a lot of times people assume that women are going to the gym to look smaller or whatever, or like get toned when like I'm trying to put on muscle mass. And there's nothing wrong with any of those goals. It's just personal preference, but like I like the idea of looking pretty jacked and so that's currently what i'm working towards i was listening to this like meditation sort of podcast but then also it's like a meditation and they were talking about creating and maintaining healthy habits and one of the most interesting things that i thought they said like at the beginning is think about like why do you want to do this and is that something that's actually going to motivate you because i've found that if my goal initially starting at the gym was like i want to get abs that's something that like yes is a goal but is that going to motivate me to get my ass up every day and go to the gym absolutely not but if i say i want to feel really strong and like feel better about myself like a mental thing like i think going to the gym putting on some muscle like that will make me feel better about myself that's something that's like much more internal and much more precious to me specifically that is going to make me get up and go to the gym every day if you're having a difficult time maintaining these habits potentially find a different motivation because if you're not sticking to it then you probably don't have a good motivation i don't know that was my understanding of the podcast i don't know if that's what they were getting at but that's what i think let's talk about my current workout split it is a six day split sort of i have two leg days two arm days two cardio and ab days technically it's like longer than a week split though so it'll probably be in like eight or nine days that i'll complete that six day sort of split i've also started running recently super recently like i don't want to get ahead of myself and i actually refuse to share any times or distances because my ego is too big for sharing those but i found that it was something i could improve upon both my mentality surrounding running and also like my physical cardiovascular endurance that's so below average so i've actually been kind of enjoying it i prefer doing it when i'm back at school because i'm like in a city there's pretty paths and things but i run probably twice a week and maybe throw in an app workout in there somewhere, but I'm not super strict on that. These two things kind of go hand in hand, but I think being a woman at the gym can be particularly intimidating and difficult to sort of get into. And then also just like some general tips for starting out. Overall, like people at the gym are very focused on themselves and bettering themselves. So they're not super worried about others. I do think social media has kind of portrayed people at the gym as being like annoying. And I hate that because nine times out of ten the gym is like a very comfortable place and everyone just again just like worried about themselves. And I also think a lot of times when you walk into the weight section of the gym, it's like predominantly men. And that can also be intimidating because you feel like you don't necessarily belong. But I think just reminding yourself that like you have just as much of a right to be there as anybody else and you should take up space and like not be upset about that. And also I think for starting out, at least for me, when I started getting like 
I don't want to say more serious than the lifting because it's like not really like that but I just went and like created a list of workouts for each of my different days and like what I was going to do and then also watch either like videos or read articles about proper form for those I always work out by myself and so I find it kind of intimidating to like try new workouts because I don't know if I'm doing them correctly and I'm always worried about my form not only just like making sure I don't hurt myself but also I don't really want to look stupid so I like to watch like the little like videos that are like if you were to try some pull downs make sure you whatever I find that helpful and then I feel much more confident going into it but just like anyone I've had like embarrassing moments at the gym I'm trying to think of a few I refuse to use the leg press machine with like where you load the plates on the side and like you're kind of upside down because I was using that one time at like my home gym I couldn't figure out how to like lock it so it wouldn't keep falling down so it like came down and my knees were like at my chin and I had to like slide out so that was kind of embarrassing <sighs> don't get me started so I knew I wanted one of these topics to be about body image because I think it's very important and I kind of have a lot to say on the subject but it turns out as I was making my notes that the majority of these things are just things that I don't do anymore that have like helped improve my body image i guess for starters i do not take progress pictures i do not take measurements and i do not weigh myself i know that a lot of people when they're trying to lose weight or start working out take progress pictures i just think that's kind of i don't know i could take progress pictures of me throughout the day after i've drank a lot of water after i've worked out after i've eaten a big meal like and i would look completely different so i don't think they're super reliable and also i think by not taking progress pictures it just like reiterates the idea that i'm working out to feel good not necessarily to look good measurements i'm not gonna lie actually it was yesterday i convinced myself that my biceps were two different sizes i'm left-handed and i convinced myself that my left bicep was significantly bigger than the other one so i did measure it they're not actually they're both the exact same measurement but that's like the extent of the measuring that i'll do and i also don't weigh myself i think weight is not the best indicator of somebody's health i am not on social media and thank god for that because i essentially have no ways to compare myself to other people which why would i need that you know what i mean if i feel good why am i going to go on social media and see all these people and then instantly start like making myself feel bad i'm not because they don't have social media and that's not a healthy relationship with their body to constantly be looking at other people and like pinpointing your flaws also social media is not real so if none of these things resonate with you potentially this one will i have heard horror stories of people in my life that have had parents that have just had really bad relationships with food and exercise and body image themselves and sort of putting those same pressures on their children which is so fucked up. And I know parents are human beings too and they have flaws and they're not perfect and whatever, but like the thought of like having kids and them disliking their body for whatever reason is heartbreaking because they're like obviously in my eyes the most perfect thing in the whole entire world. And so I have to like remind myself of that both as like a child and also as a future parent, you know? At some point in the far far future let's let's be clear here if i had any negative feelings even like the chance that my child would notice these things and then take them on as their own that's horrible and awful and by no means am i trying to shame these parents but also i want to change that and i do not want to have that happen and like i said the way that my parents raised me made such an impact on how i am now so i don't know okay hopefully that was interesting or helpful but I adore you guys and you guys are perfect and you'll figure it out. You got it. Okay. Love you. Bye.